Good evening ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of Fixer Does Technic. And if you haven't noticed by the duration of this video, it's going to be a little longer than usual. Um, put simply, I have taken a look at how much recording I've got, how much I want to do, and how long it'll take for me to get back into playing the game again. And I've decided that it's just going to take way too freaking long for me to go ahead and wait until I get uh, back into the scheme of things. As you can see, I made a gold sword, which is, you know, of course, usually a waste of resources. But on the werewolves, let me get rid of this, on werewolves and on wraiths, the gold sword is actually far more effective. And since I can repair it, it's something I want to do. That, by the way, is not the best way to do things. Since I'm wanting this to be receiving, uh, I could have just used like cobblestone pipes and not wood pipes. Wood pipes are only good for pulling things out of. Like I could use that to pull stuff out of that chest, but it's not so. It it doesn't do any good to use wood build craft pipe there. I've been doing a lot more research on the build craft and uh, pneumatic tubes. And I can see where both of them have their have good strengths. In addition to the additional pipes added in like the, uh, what is it called? Wooden variable something pipe? Anyway, it, it acts, it allows wooden transport pipes to act like a red power filter. So whenever I actually get back into playing, I'll go ahead and use that. There's going to be a lot of mining on this episode, so I'm going to accelerate it, and while that's going on, I'm going to talk to you guys about what I currently know about 1.4, in case you haven't heard about it from anywhere else. You probably have, but just in case you haven't, I will go ahead and bring you up to date. Wow, that's full. Awesome. Um, this is where I try to figure out how can I make a larger reservoir system, so I figured, well... Let's just put it next to it, and maybe it'll fill up. Of course, I find out later that this is incorrect and does not work, but we will see soon enough. And it's a very large lava pool, so it's going to take a while to go ahead and refill. Apparently, each one of these tanks will hold 16 buckets worth of lava. So right there is 48 buckets of lava. And of course, my geothermal generator is generating power, but it's not being used to do anything yet. So it's all good, but as I said, we're going to go ahead and go, some, go mining this particular episode. So, if you'll come with me here, and we're going to go ahead and go into fast forward mode. There we go. Now, I want to go ahead and uh, talk about 1.4 for a moment. For those of you unfamiliar with what's going on at 1.4, it's looking to be a major update. Uh, for one thing, Fire spread will be affected by whatever the difficulty level on the server is. So if you set it for hard, it's going to be really fast fire spread and really far. It's not going to burn out like it usually does. Um, another thing, they're adding a command block, which you will be able to craft. Um, well, not really. You'll be able to get it as, if you're an administrator, but uh, I'm hoping that eventually it will be made available as an actual craftable block. But for right now, it's primarily being u u available for adventure maps, so you can have an area where you can like heal fast or have super jumping ability or, and things of that nature. Um, also, oh sorry, the command block is what uh, I get my blocks mixed up. There's so many things going on in this next update. The command block is one where you cannot generate it. In other words, you can't craft it. It actually has to be placed by an administrator and not by a regular old user. And that is something that allows administrators to actually allow commands to be run by people other than themselves whenever the redstone is sent to a particular command block. Now, people who are not administrators cannot change the command that a command block is set to. So you can, for example, if you run a server, have it set so if somebody pushes a button on a command block, suddenly it you know, toggles the time to be daytime. So anybody who pushes that button can make it be daytime and just reset the time clock. So useful for some servers use and not so useful for others. I know for my part I don't want almost anybody running command lines on my server. So that will see very limited use. The only kind of thing I would see let it be used for is like healing. 
perhaps, since you can actually have a commander heal or to grant experience points. But uh, even that will have to be something that I'll be watching very carefully. Um, a few more commands will be allowed, like being able to turn PvP on and off without having to restart the server, which is handy. Um, being able to change spawn points based on per player, but not based on the whole server. So right now on the server, you it's hard to change a spawn point on the server. But uh, this will allow you to set a spawn point for a particular player to be a given coordinate. So, you know, if they have a bed, of course that will overwrite it, but if they lose their bed for whatever reason, they'll spawn at this new spawn point, wherever it happens to be. Um, you can also change game rules via the command lock or via c new console commands that will be available. And lots of other just, you know, administrative type stuff good there. Now for the uh, non-administrators, they've added an anvil. There are plenty of things that, uh, there are plenty of videos already on YouTube that demonstrate it, but to give you an overview, it lets you repair enchanted items, which right now there's no way to do that. It'll allow you to merge enchantments between enchanted items up to a certain point, since there is currently a limit on how powerful enchantment, enchantments can get on a given item. Uh, it will also it <laughs> it can also be used to uh, damage opponents because you know just like in the cartoons anvils are heavy and when dropped on a creature they will cause a certain amount of damage based on how far they fall up to and including killing things. So those look to be rather interesting. Also with an anvil you can rename an item like you can give it the marvelous sword of Wampass if you would like to name it such a thing and use that and just, you know you spend experience to do all these things see wooden logs will be rotated based on what side of the block they're placed on so if you place a log on the side of a block it will always be facing you know the the grain side will be facing you whereas if you place it on the bottom or top of a block it'll, the grain will be facing up or down Let's see, uh, you'll be able to do better uh, world generation customization, and I've actually got some more details on this, but I'll go into that later. Oops, knocked my torch out. Oh, that's handy. There we go, and count for the torch. Right now I'm just collecting these resources because I'm gonna need I'm gonna need a lot of diamonds to make the cables I need, and so I'm gonna need lots of materials to make diamonds with in my energy condenser. So that's why I'm doing all this mining right now. Let's see, what else is going on? Uh, there's going to be more stuff inside the nether, but I don't think uh, they gave too many details other than, for example, wither, ske uh, wither skeletons, which will drop skulls. R skulls are a rare drop from any hostile mob now, and I believe also from fellow players if you kill them. But uh, wither skulls are actually used to make the new boss, which is the wither. And if you haven't seen videos of it, go watch some, because that thing is just badass. It is a killer. Let's see, what else? Oh, super uh, super flat spawn... Uh, oops, there we go. Super flat has been uh, updated a little bit so that you can see better. Uh, you can decide what you want specifically in your super flat world, including adding some... Stuff. You can't add caves that I have found, and I've been doing a lot of exploring on the uh, ability to manipulate it using the super flat, and I'll give some more details on that later. Let's see uh, entities like cows, mine carts, and you know arrows, whatnot, gas fireballs will now be able to travel through under portals. So you need to be a little careful on that. Of course, if you're in one world, uh, right. Now, dimensions are not loaded whenever you, uh, you know, whenever you're in the normal world, the nether world is not loaded at all into memory. So it doesn't matter what happens in the nether, it won't actually affect anything in the real world too. So I'm wondering if what they're going to do is make it so that multiple dimensions can be loaded at once. That's the only way I can imagine that that's going to work. Oh, out of space. Hmm. I don't have two dirt, so is there somewhere I can put two dirt? I don't like leaving anything behind, though. That's just my OCD, though. So I'm going to go back and pick up those dirt. 
drop my shovel. And then uh, just make some make a hole here and put the dirt in it so I can pick up my shovel. There we go. See, now I didn't leave anything behind. Let's see, do, 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 do. what else is going on? Uh, let's see. Portals will teleport an entity relative to where it entered. See, oh, there's a new wooden button, which is nice for map makers, so that you can shoot a button with an arrow or hit it with a snowball and actually have it trigger something. So, let's see. Is my. I don't see the tanks being filled. Yep, that didn't work. So I have to come back and straighten that out a little bit. Let's see, what else? Uh, wooden buttons and regular buttons will be triggered for longer periods of time when used. So if you push a button, then it'll actually be on for a longer period of time than it has been, which for those of you who know the problem of buttons and iron doors, you'll know what I'm talking about. It seems that they don't last nearly long enough. Let's see, also, the only way to activate buttons and doors and such will be to right click. If you left click, it's you're going to be trying to either mine it or break it. So that's that's how it's going to be from now on. Two new potions were added, a night vision potion and an invisibility potion. Let's see, both of which can be made into splash potions. Invisibility does work on mobs, so you can have invisible uh I had an idea for invisible blaze being used as sort of a turret. Uh, let's see, ma macerate. I'm going to try to macerate as much of this as I can because I need EMC right now. More than anything, I need to make diamonds for cables. So that's what I'm going to do in here. I cranked down the sound a little bit so it shouldn't be too loud. Let's see, what else is going on? Uh, the ability to make custom potions will be available. But that is not uh, detailed as of the latest snapshot that I saw. Let's see. It says improved NPC villages and villages make them more self-aware, but I don't really know what the heck that means. Um, let's see. You can now restore a desolate village or make create a completely new village, but it once again doesn't really specify how. Uh, the beacons have been added, and those are awesome. But the only way you can make a beacon is to kill a wither boss, boss and that's hard. Let's see, let's go ahead and start making some diamonds. I need lots of diamonds. That's not enough. And refined iron cannot be EMC. Alright, dust. Okay, so let's just go ahead and take what I've got. Uh, let's see, back to beacons. Uh, beacons add temporary potion effects based on how big of a pyramid they're placed on. They make very bright light and shine light straight up into the sky. So they're also used as, uh, for those of you who have seen the spotlights at like Hollywood events, it makes an effect like that but pointing straight up, which is kind of funny. See, the minimum range is 16 blocks, and it can be extended to make it even far. Let's see here. Uh, let's see, each block can only inflict one can only apply one effect at a time. Let's see. Don't see anything here. Oh, each layer unlocks a new level of effects and increases the range by eight blocks. And since there are four layers, that means that the maximum size of the blocks is about. 48, I believe. Okay, uh, let's see here. Mob related changes in the next update. Uh, actually, we're going to hold on that. I'm going to explain what's going on. Right now, what I need to do is I need to start making glass fiber cable because it has a very low uh, reduction in the amount of uh, resources it uses. Those, I don't, yeah, I'll just leave one behind. Make some iron. Let's see. I'm going to need iron to make a uh, machine block and to make the circuit. So, because I'm seriously needing another macerator right now. I have too many ores and not enough macerators, and macerators are just too slow. So there's six to make what I need. Six plus the three is enough to make a, another print circuit, which I have one there, but apparently I forgot. 
and enough to make another machine block. Let's see, I'm leaving two of each ore behind just so I can have a few of it present. And I'll just macerate the rest, turn it into dust, and then EMC the dust into what I need. I think this is being really loud, so hold on. There we go. Turn down the sound way down. Now it's not nearly so annoying. Alright, got enough of that, so let's go ahead and make what I need. Um, I'm gonna need the cables. Alright, step one, go ahead and make the machine block. That's eight in a box. Now I make the circuit board. One of those on each side, that there, and six of the copper cables, or come on, going around it. There we go. Then I'm gonna need two cobblestone. I'm gonna need three flint, which I don't have on me. Now I've got it on me. Oops, did not mean to toss that. There we go. Um, doo -doo -doo -doo, one, two, three. Cobblestones on the side. Okay, well, they're there, and then cobblestones on the side. Come on. My mouse is starting to act up on me. Alright, whoops. Pick that up. Now I need to get it some power. Pop. And there we go. It is now hooked up. I need... Oh, I already have iron ores on me. Let's go ahead and put this in there and grab the dust, turn it into more diamonds. Oh, well, wait. I don't have what I need here. Let's see, and grab another one. So I have two iron bars and let's go ahead and make some more diamonds. Not sure how long that'll take to... Alright. Now, unfortunately, I do not do a very good job of making a decision as to what sort of materials to use to make my first set of glass fiber cables, because I use redstone instead of silver, and that is a foolish thing to do when making glass fiber cables. Diamonds are a lot harder to get than silver. Let's see, what am I doing, what am I doing? Alright, collecting the dust, collecting the dust, putting the dust in here. I got nothing going on in there. I really need to get a quarry s set up here. I just haven't had time. All right, that's enough for two. Oh, I don't need that many. Let's see, that's enough for ten. That's enough for. Let's see, I have eight. I have eighty divided by six is. Not an even number. I don't know why I decided to keep 80. All right, glass, glass, there we go. Now, pull it up, how do I use it? See, this is where I don't even go to page two and look. That's my big mistake. I have learned since then. I have five of those, five of those. And put those together. Oops, not those. There we go, that'll give me 20 cables. Poof. Very foolish way to do it, but, you know. Trying to make is trying to make enough to reach the to have the power from the geothermal generator come all the way up to the top so it can be powering everything instead of this little furnace I've got going here. Let's see, so I need more diamonds. That's still trying to make more diamonds. And I have plenty of red stone. Hmm. I'm trying to look for stuff I can macerate, or not macerate, that I can go ahead and convert. Put that in there. It's not much. Let's see, what do I got? I got 12 more dust. 12 more dust. Put that in. I almost made a diamond by itself. It takes so long to generate diamonds when you're not using, uh, the solar collectors. Alright, looks like I'm going to be going back down and start working on the tunnel going up while that's going on. Let me go ahead and talk more about the the mob changes in 1.4. When you kill the ender dragon, 
the portal will actually be created on the ground as opposed to up in the air when you kill it. Which, for those of us who have killed the Ender Dragon a time or two, thank you. It's annoying whenever you have to try to figure out a way of getting up high. Yep, you can break you can break those with just your hands. I'll make sure I didn't lose anything. Not sure why I dug that out. Alright. Time to start digging straight up, but making sure that I have a way of getting around. Let's see here. And jumping up. Oops, can't do it that way. Come on, there we go. There we go. Now I'm on top of the glass fiber. Whoops. Did not wish to do that. There we go. Let's see, there's my spawner. Let's go ahead and collect this stuff here. Ow. Apparently that was holding me up. Do not do that again. Right, I'll start, continue working my way up. Now, it is not a good idea to mine up without it taking some precautions and I'm going to be doing so here you can see I can just shuffle to the side just a little bit so that if gravel pops down it won't fall right on my head and suffocate me and there we go now I can start jumping up and placing more cable I do not have enough cable to reach all the way back up to the surface but I'm going to try to get as far as I can just mining into the wall as needed and then mining up. There we go. Continue as needed. Alright, back to the 1.4 changes. See, chickens will now need to be fed wheat seeds to breed instead of full-fledged wheat, which is a good thing. You know, wheat's a little bit harder to get than seeds. See, if you have a carrot on a with a fishing rod, that gives you the carrot on a stick, which is then used to control pigs. Um, now, you can use the carrot and the stick to go ahead and direct the pig, but at the same time, the carrot will eventually wear out or be eaten by the pig. So you will need to carry around a bunch of carrots if you want to use this for long distance travel. I might use that. Let's see. Pigs go about five blocks per second, which is very fast. I think that's faster than a boat. Let's see, when you kill a pig that has a saddle on it, it will actually drop the saddle now, so you don't have to worry about losing the saddle. Let's see, sheep spawn eggs can now spawn natural colored sheep, such as white, gray, brown, pink. Let's see, a few new mobs, such as the witch, which looks like a villager but has a pointy hat. And they throw, they throw potions and they will try to kill you. Uh, they also spawn in a hut, which will also spawn in swamps. I've actually found one. They're rare, but you, you can find them. Let's see. Do, 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 do. What else? Oh, there's a bat now, which is a non-hostile mob. But it does leave the uh, option open to add in, like, vampires. For those who are interested in making mods, you can now have your own Twilight series. Please don't do it, though. Please. For the love of the rest of us. Let's see, zombies infect villagers, so whenever zombies kill villagers, they can actually become a zombie villager, and you can transform them back using a... what is it? I think it's a golden apple and a potion of weakness. Um, zombies can pick up items that are on the ground, which does include anything that is dropped on the ground, as of the latest snapshot. I've seen videos of them picking up rotten flesh and using that to try to kill people. So they're not picky. And whatever it is that they have in their hands, they will drop whenever they die. So you'll be able to get it back if they pick up your favorite sword. Let's see. On normal difficulty, villagers will be infected half the time, but on hard difficulty, there is a 100% chance that villagers will become zombie villagers when they are infected. So you can have your own epidemic going on if you play on hard difficulty. See, infected baby villagers turn into baby zombies. They are 50% faster, do not age, and they do not burn up in the sun. Alright, well, I'm not getting up any higher, am I? Alright, time to start mining down. 
and I'll just work my way back up later. I'm going to need lots of stuff to get back up here. Oh, continuing on, let's see, ouch, that hurt. Let's see, armor and weapons will can be found on mobs. I've seen skeletons with full gold armor, full gold, as in helmet, chest plate, leggings, boots, the whole bit. Unfortunately, not all of it drops. Let's see what we got going on here. Uh, let's see. Do, 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 do. Even baby zombies can wear armor. That's kind of cute. Let's see, mobs only drop the gear and weapons that they are carrying, but uh, there is a higher chance that they'll have stuff on a hard difficulty. Villagers will now like and dislike you based on whether or not you have attacked them or traded with them, and villagers who dislike you will refuse to trade with you. Let's see, villagers will dislike you for killing other villagers or allowing them to die. And villagers will also offer better trades if they like you. Let's see. Here's some decor decoration stuff. There are new paintings which allows you which shows how to craft the Wither Boss. So for those of you making paintings, there is a new one out there. Let's see. There are now item frames, which means you can place an item inside of a picture frame and it will show you correctly whatever the picture does. If it's a weapon, it just sits there. But if it's something like a map or a clock, then it will show the correct direction. Oh, I ran out of power. Shoot. This is why I need to put the power up here. Let's go ahead and put these away. I need charcoal. There you go. We'll grab a stack of eight. Start generating more power. Wrong side, wrong side, there we go. Let's see, what else is new? Uh, let's see, any item can be placed in a frame? Let's see, flower pots have been added. I think they're just made like a bucket, but with clay bricks instead. Let's see, saplings, mushrooms, flowers, cactus, grass, including ferns and shrubs, can be placed in a flower pot. Oh, god, the noise. And turn down. There we go. Okay, there are now cobblestone walls, which are made exactly the same as fences, but instead of wood sticks, you use cobblestone. And there is a mossy variant, for those of you who like mossy cobblestone. So you can dye leather armor into different colors, and apparently there are millions of different colors. See, so put dyes and armor in the crafting grid to apply the different dyes. You can use a cauldron to wash the dye off of the armor. You can also dye the color of wolf's collars. So, if, for example, if you want to have one that just stands out for you, you can dye his collar and say, this one is named blank. And then from there on, on, you can actually identify your dogs. Let's see, there are now corner stairs. Uh, maps got a bit of an upgrade. When you first make a map, it's actually a very small area, but as you surround that map with paper in the crafting grid, you can make it bigger and bigger and bigger until it's like continent sized, which I think is an awesome addition. I love that one personally. See, you will also be able to clone maps because when you craft a map, it doesn't actually set for where it, the area it's in. It's just sort of a blank map. And then you can put a already created map and a blank map together. And then it'll actually give you two of that crafted map. So you can have duplicate copies of it. I like it. See, paintings no longer drop when clicking in the creative. That was getting annoying. Trapdoors can be placed on the top or the bottom of a block. See, heads can now, the, the heads that are a rare drop from mobs can be placed for decorations. They can be placed at the same angles as signs, hung against walls, and worn as a hat. And that is all I have on the latest edition for 1.4. And I think that's probably all I'm going to do for tonight, because we're coming up on a half an hour. Let me know if you dislike these longer videos. Like I said, I'm trying to get through these, because there are just so many hours of video that I have already recorded. So let me know if you don't like this, and if you, you know, if you like it and you think it's okay. You can see here I get a little bit smarter and make the good fiber cables this time. And there we go. See, I got 12 that time for two diamonds. Let's see, what else is going on? Still have energy. That's good. 
I'm still in need of EMC, and that's just not producing it fast enough for me. Hmm. Is there anything else I can do? I'll put that away. Not really a whole lot I can do there. Let's see. I need to make nothing, I guess. So I'll have... Oops. That was me trying to leave and then travel forward. Okay, time to leave the bunker. Come on, step out of the bunker. Put my sounds back to normal. There we go. And we're going to call it a good evening. I hope everyone sleeps well while I'm collecting sticky resin. Boy, that sounds strong. Anyway, good night.